Okay, here we go. Uh, welcome, 4.2, day number one, transformations of functions, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, uh, all that good stuff. We're going to graph a few things. It's going to be great. Uh, let's get started. Uh, this is the big problem from yesterday, um, finding a bunch of stuff. Uh, we can talk this over on the side if you'd like to. I'm not going to spend video time. I have a valuable 15 minutes, and that's all I got. Uh, okay, let's take a function f of x and let's do some transformations to it and turn it into g of x. Oh, so fun. You guys remember there's vertical transformations and horizontal transformations? Yeah. Which of these four letters, a, b, c, or d, represents a vertical transformation? A and d. They happen on the outside of the function, right? So B and C happen on the inside of the function. Those are horizontal transformations. You might remember that from higher algebra. So let me just label these clearly. Uh, a represents a vertical transformation. We'll talk about that in a moment. Same with D. And our horizontal transformations are B and C. Okay. So let's chat about what A does to this function. What would A do to this function, f of x? It'd be a vertical what? Stretch or shrink? Possibly what? A reflection if it's negative, yeah. Oh, we remember things. What about, uh, what about D? That's a vertical what? Shift, yeah, up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative. How about horizontal? What is B? A horizontal stretch, shrink, or reflection. Horizontal stretch, shrink, or reflection. Okay, and C is a horizontal shift. All right, cool. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty good for a description. Is there anything else you think we should add? Okay, so let's add that detail in here. Yes, A is a ref could possibly be a reflection, but it'd be a reflection over which axis? Over the X, right? Vertical reflection, reflection over the X, and a horizontal reflection would be a reflection over the Y. Thank you, Ellie. That was a good addition to that information. Okay, so I want to tell you a story along with the next slide about these numbers, right? I got a five, a three, a four, and a six. Um, which of these are horizontal transformations? Three and four, right? Okay, now, those are horizontal. They are on the inside. So what does this three actually even represent? It's a stretch. Wait, is it? No, it's a shrink. It's the opposite, right? It's a shrink by a factor of one-third. Ah, tricky, tricky. Okay, and then this negative four is a shift which direction? Four units. So right four. Now, does it matter which one happens first? Yes, it does. Which one happens first? Shift. Okay, everything is the opposite on the inside. So think about this for a minute, right? When you're a kid and you're five years old and you wanted to chuck like hard things like Nerf balls that had needles attached to them and stuff. Wait, what? You didn't do that? Okay, you wanted to throw a baseball in the house, right? Mom said to do what? Go outside. That's where you can do what you want to do. On the inside, you do what you're told to do. Most of the time, the opposite of what you want to do, right? So we think that this 3 represents this stretch by a factor of 3. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's a shrink. And we think this is, well, minus 4. That means left. No, it doesn't. It's the opposite. Now, hold on. I, I might have misspoken earlier. We actually do the stretch first, right? 
we do the stretch for, or in this case, the shrink first. Um, well, well, we'll get there in a minute, okay? On the outside, right, you get outside, mom's inside or dad's inside, they're taking care of business. You're like, whatever, I'm going to hit this golf ball with a tennis racket. I'm going to do whatever I want to. I'm going to follow the order in which it happens, right? I'd multiply by five first, and then I'd add six. So here we go. Let's continue. Of course, y here, like I said, we'd multiply by five and add six. Now, I'm, I'm one. I'm a simple being. I am... I am a man. I am very simple. Not all men are simple, but some are. I like to keep things as plain as I can. I like to take this set of transformations, which we just saw on the last page, and I want to apply them to a point. And that point is going to be the point 0.58. Now, I don't know if this is a function like square root of x. I don't know if this is absolute value of x or x squared. All I know is that I'm going to take that point and I'm going to do some transformations to it. Okay, so first transformation I should do is I want to work um, on the inside first. So what should I do to x? Multiply by one third and then add four. Okay, so so this I was right the first time and I confused myself. You want to go opposite of the opposite, opposite of the order of operations on the inside as well as do the opposite of the operation. So the first operation I'll do is I'm going to add 4. Then I'm going to multiply by 1 third. So if I add 4 to 5, I get 9. I multiply by 1 third, I get 3. That's my new x value put through this transformation. Okay, my y value, my y value I'm going to multiply by 5 first. And then I'm going to add 6. So I get 40 and I get 46. So my new point, my new x and my new y, 5, 8 transformed into 3, comma, 46. You with me so far? Okay, let's try another one. We're just going to change, change the transformations. Okay, so again, keep it simple. Give yourself a nice little chart. My x value is 14. My y value is 8. Let's talk about those transformations. We want to volunteer their knowledge and services here. Yeah, let's add 4 and multiply by 1 6. So I add 4, I get 18. I multiply by 1 6, I get 3. Sweet, I got half of my new points. Over here for y. What do I do for y? JJ. Okay, multiply by negative 2. And add 14. Okay, this is a classic example of um, a child thinking of something the correct way and then writing down something that's going to hurt them later on. If you don't write the multiplication symbol here, someone will subtract 2. Guaranteed, it's going to happen. Okay, so make sure and write down times, negative 2, multiply it. Add 4, 14, excuse me. Uh, looks like I get negative 2. Okay, cool. We have transformed and translated that point. Annie, you got a question? Let's continue. All right, we got one more here. Okay, same thing. Let's walk ourselves through this. Uh, does anybody want to get on mic? Anybody want to get on mic? I'll give you a sticker. You want to get on mic? Get up here, Russell. I'm Russell, uh, six-hour MHS student. Yeah. No. Honors, math, whatever. Yeah, I'm about to do this. All right, so start with the point, so one and two. And then since the X is on the inside of the parentheses, you want to do like the reverse order operations. So you're going to do plus 3 and then times negative 1. And then so that's 4 and then negative 4. And then for the y, you want to use order of operations. So it's times negative 8 
put in a plus four, and that would be what was sixteen, and then negative six. Perfect. All right. So. So Russell said plus 3, which should have been a minus 3, which is going to change our answers here. Uh, but you did all the operations correct. You just did that one small step wrong, Russell. So let's subtract 3 from that, uh, which would give us negative 2, and then multiply by negative 1, which gives us 2. So our new point is 2. Let's make sure we did this right. Negative 8, that's good. Plus 10, that's a negative 6, I think, right? Okay, cool. So our new point is 2, negative 6. Thanks, Russell. Okay, so R2, there you go. Russell got himself a nice sticker with a kid that's got just a sick part. Um, okay, this is, uh, this is maybe mildly intimidating. However, it can be easily transformed into something that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, uh, really the only... Um, complicated portion of this is the vertical transformation going on. All we're doing to the y values, right, the x values, we're going to subtract 1, multiply by negative 1 half. Right, I'll just subtract 1 and multiply over here. Well, let me change my color. Multiply by negative 1 half. But for the y values, I just had to kind of split things up. I'm going to subtract excuse me, multiply by negative 3 halves and then add 4 halves or 2. You can take something complicated and turn it into something a little bit easier to work with. A couple of the other teachers use a different method. If you want to look into that method, that's right here. I don't prefer that. I like to see things kind of sketched out in a different way. Um, I can talk through that if you want to see it later. Um, but really all that transformations are doing are taking a graph and translating all the points in the same form. It's not changing anything unless there's a stretch of some sort or a shrink of some sort. Right? So if there's just a vertical or horizontal s shift, the function looks exactly the same. It's just been moved. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, in number one here, g of x, g of x is being reflected which direction? Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Nothing else is changing. There's no shift involved. We're good. There it is. Okay, and there's square root of negative x. All right, I got a shift to the left three and then a reflection horizontally. Okay, let's see what that would look like. All right, I'm going to shift this one, two, three to the left and then reflect horizontally one, two, three. That would put our final image right there. Let's just see. Well, this is, so this was step one, right? So left three units. And then this would be step two, which would be reflect over um, a y axis horizontally. If I was still doing reverse PEMDAS now, let's say I, I use this set of transformations, reverse PEMDAS would be the outside negative first, right? So I would be reflecting over the line y equals x. And then, so that would be my first transformation, reflect. Oh, that's just terrible. OK, just deal with it. That e is really weird. And then I would shift it. What does the minus 3 do? Shift it to the right three units. So regardless of, oh, fail. Regardless of the order in which you do it, as long as you do reverse PEMDAS, you end up in the same spot. All right, so for those at home, this next function only has vertical transformations. The first transformation would be a reflection over the x-axis right here. Following PEMDAS, we would do that first, and then we would add 3. So our final, oh, I got 9 seconds. Here's our final image in all three of them. 
let's wait for them. Uh, 